This morning I was called a coon for being successful by a hotep. He left a comment on my why black folks don't want to mix with other races and he became insulting. And this, this is something that I've run into with coon, the hotep community. There is a belief that I have been allowed to be in the position that I'm in. Does not matter that I entered into a business and worked really hard. No, 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 no. The only reason I'm here is because I was one of the tokens. I was allowed to be here. And one of the reasons that the hotel community is so insulting is they know nothing about building businesses, about creating money, about creating wealth. They know absolutely nothing about it. And every time they see a person of color who has done that, it is an assumption that he was allowed. So I'm going to tell you my story again for those who are recent because he also said, I wasn't doing anything for my people. Do I not have a free course below that teaches people how to make money? Hmm. So he's also ignorant and woefully ignoring facts that are blatantly staring him in his face. And this is one of the typical things about people who live in racial silos. They cannot see anything, they don't know anything, and they refuse to be educated. So this is my story. I used to be homeless. And this is one of the reasons that I'm so ardent and passionate about starting a business and you can be successful. Is it gonna be easy? No, it's not. Is it gonna be hard? Yes, it is. Is this gonna require you to make sacrifices? Yes, it will. But it is doable. And I see doing that versus being subject and prey to the way of the world is a much better option. So this is my story because I've talked about this and see the whole tips don't watch those videos where I actually talk about competition because he brought up competition. Whole tips know nothing about competition because they live in racial silos and they refuse to go out and have competitive ways with other minority, with other groups. Now, I started off, which got me here, which is doing storage auctions where I had to be competitive with white storage auction traders and I had to competitively bid money against these people and get better units to win. So that was in real competition. Uh, I was not allowed here. I did not get here because I was a token. This is one of the things that jealous and beyonder, you are jealous because you're seeing someone that looks like you but who doesn't live like you. And you're just trying to figure out, well, they allowed him to live in that million dollar neighborhood. They allowed him to have a Porsche. They, you know, he's a token to be put up in front of other black folks as, as an example. You know how insulting that is to someone who has worked as hard as I have? You know how blatantly insulting that is? But this is the ignorance that the hotel community puts out time and time again because they are scared. They don't want to intermingle with other groups because they are scared and they don't have the skills to compete. Because this is one of the things that if you are a progressive black person, you will find out very, very quickly, white people are not against you. This is something that the hotel community will drill in your head over and over and over. The white man got his foot on your neck. The white man ain't gonna let a black man have nothing. You, you'll find out that it's true. And many of you who are the progressive blacks who have similar background and experiences as I do, you've been chiming in the comments. And it's like, man, this is 100% spot on. And this is one of the reasons that the black community is so poor because of these false narratives. It is a false narrative that white people do not want you to be successful. It's a false narrative that, oh, here's a big false narrative. Michael Jordan gets a lot of flack from, quote, the hotel community because it is believed that it was little black children in the ghetto that bought his Jordans that made him a billionaire. It's false. You know who bought those Jordans that made him a billionaire? White kids. White 
middle class suburban kids. They bought the Jordans, they bought the jerseys, they bought the paraphernalia, they went to the games. That's who supported Michael Jordan, that's who made the Jack and Jordan a billionaire. It wasn't little poor little black kids putting their nickels together to get some Jordans. But once again, the whole tip community is full of false narratives and blatant lies. Because it was a white game, it was a white dude who taught me the corporate game. It's a white dude who uh, sublet his warehouse to me to get for my storage auction business. So time and time again, because I'm participating, I'm not living in a racial silo because I'm actually out here doing stuff. I actually know things that you don't, hotel community, because a lot of you are just scared. A lot of you are just crazy. A lot of you are racist. And I don't want to hear this Francis West Kreslin, well, black people can't be racist. If you're going to say mean things about another group because they're white, that makes you racist in my opinion. And, you know, I'm just sitting here looking at this. One of the things that happens is from the hotel community is a lack of respect. I used to be homeless. I wrote a book. I worked really hard and I got somewhere in life and that is completely ignored because it doesn't fit the hotel black person blueprints of success. Now, if I had went to jail and came out and did the same thing I did, brother Cameron, brother Cameron, brother Cameron, See, the hotel community, people living in racial silos, is, is, is mine and dysfunction. That someone who used to sell poison to our children went to jail and got out and did, you know, mir miraculously turned his life around would have more acclimates than a quote, educated lame who did well. And this is one of the fallacies of the black community because I'm just sitting there because I, I went ahead and blocked Beyonder because we're going, you know, he is a stupid person because many of the things that he said in his comments was fundamentally false. And this whole thing of when you mix with other groups, you create another level of company competition. You know, there's a video talking about the race games where black folks and white people are running this race and then black folks have all of these hangups and trips and problems. Uh, that ain't really stopping black people from being successful. And I'm really glad to see that younger black people are refusing to embrace these false narratives and going out and they are getting the bag. They're making money. You will see many, many under 30 millionaires here on the internet because they refuse to believe into that BS. And also, hoteps are dumb because they embrace creating a black business that serves black people. Black people only represent 14% of the population, so you're gonna create a business that only serves 14% of the population? From a business standpoint, that's whack. You wanna create a business that's gonna serve as many people in your, your segment as possible, not just 14%. Now, there have been some amazing businesses that have done well by just selling to black folks, but typically they kind of, they're, they're so good that they typically leap out of the black paradigm. And one of the things that gets me is the hostility of the hoteps. Dude called me a coon because I don't think what he thinks. Now, I'm not a coon. I don't really think a lot of people that the hoteps call coons are not coons. Essentially, for hoteps, if you don't agree with my ideology, you are a coon. That's it. That's 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 so simple. That's 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 a very very low threshold. It's a very very low bar. And the more I think about it, is a lot of the hoteps are lazy. A lot of hoteps don't know anything about business, and they 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 refuse to participate because one of the things that I will tell you is when you don't live in a racial silo and you're open. Your, your life experiences are richer and greater. But people who live in racial silos and who are afraid to participate in life, who are afraid to mix and mingle with other cultures, are doomed to poverty and mediocrity. Because like I said, I get these comments from the hotel community because I see myself as an educator and I see myself as a sharer of truth 
And one of the things I wanna do is to share my journey and share things that will work for you if you embrace them. Because the typical black people marketing department ideology is not going to make you wealthy. You know, unless you wanna open up a chain of chicken shacks, you wanna open up a chain of barbershops, that's black folks cool, that's acceptable. Or you wanna be a drug dealer, then go to jail and reform your life and come out and try to do something else, that's acceptable. But just sitting down and embracing the fact, and look, I'm about to say something that's gonna trigger a bunch of people, trigger warning, the fact that you are an American. You're not an African American. Yes, did we come from Africa, is that our ancestry? Yes, but you are an American first. And if you embrace American values, American work ethic, and do it the American way, you can get wealthy. But once again, just saying that is hostile to a lot of black folks. It's like, I'm African American. And this is one of the things with identity politics. A lot of people lead with their blackness and do not lead with their humanity, their intellect, and their abilities. Well, I'm black first. What is black first? What, how much money do you get for being black? How much money do you make for being black? From my calculations, zero. Because essentially, when you enter into a sphere of competition, real competition with a service or product, they don't give a damn that you're black. It's like, can this person help me do what I need? And if you can help them, they're gonna pay you. It's just that simple. But due to the false narratives of the hotel community and people like Beyonder who are stuck on these topical issues, well, black folks shouldn't miss mixed race with people. You know, a black man should be married to a black woman. Black people need to separate from white folks. You're born in America. I grew up in a neighborhood that was a mixed neighborhood in Alabama of all places. We were like right on the line and there were white people literally like living next door to black folks. And there was never no hostility, nothing ever jumped off, nothing ever went down. It was just people living together and sharing life. But to the hotel community, that would have been wrong. That would have been wrong. So if you're living in the racial silo, I suggest that you come out because I saw a video that was talking about how racist Japanese people were. And I've been to Japan. I was in Japan for six months. I didn't have no problem. And it's, it's, it's this, this sensitivity that you need to be treated special because you're black, because of the atrocities that happened to our ancestors. Ain't happened to you, didn't happen to your mom, didn't happen to your dad, didn't happen to your uncle, didn't happen to anybody that you know, but because it happened to a group of people that we are interrelated with, that we should get some special treatment and it's just whack. Cause you know, one of the things that people need to understand, if you want to be successful in America, act like an American. I know there are many people who are going to move to Ghana, moving back to Africa. And if that's your desire, good, good luck to you and well wishes, but I'm not moving to Africa. I remember years ago, uh, I was working with a little kid. The kid his kid came into the, the clinic and this guy was a missionary and he lived in Africa. And he was just talking about all of the things that they could not get. Little, little stuff that you, you would miss, like M&Ms and Snickers, you, you just couldn't get in Africa. And you know, there are parts of Africa that are amazing and beautiful, but there are parts of Africa that are mired in poverty and subhuman conditions. And that is altogether Africa. And I don't have any mythical um, narrative about Africa where I go to Africa, it's gonna be all right. I'll be around my people. What I have seen, what I've known, what I've entered, inter, because a lot of Africans who come here, first thing they do is they start a business. They peep the game early. These are the truth. These are from the motherland. They peep the game early. But a lot of indigenous African Americans, they just sit on their hands, you know, and people like, reparations, we need reparations. You know, you need to get off your ass and get to work and get your own reparations. Because I don't, you know, and someone made this comment, it's like, oh, I made some money, so I don't need no reparations. 
I felt this way when I didn't have any money. I felt this way because essentially none of us were slaves. I know that's logical and that's a serious fear and all the stuff like, you know, the Jews, the Jews got direct payments from Germany in 1952. And the Native American Indians did a lawsuit and got a settlement, not reparations. But once again, and this whole notion of trying to get money out of somebody for actually doing nothing, absolutely nothing. I, I just think it's crazy. But you know, if you live in a racial silo, that's on you and you're gonna miss out on a lot on life. And this whole notion, cause you know, the fact that I even say that as a man, you should have in your dating options, white women, Latin women, Asian women, as well as black women. That's blasphemy. That's blasphemy. And years ago, when I was living in an apartment, I ran across some young black men. And I was just like, hey, you know, what's going on? What are y'all dating? They were like, oh, we're dating the Latinas and Asians. I was like, what? This is something because of the behavior and of the culture that very young men in a wealthy neighborhood made the decision to, quote, date out or to swirl. And instead of addressing the problems within the community, we want to sit back on um, the position, leadership position. Essentially, because I'm a black woman, I should have the best of the black men and the best of the black men should not seek comfort, options, or affection anywhere else. And that is a trap. BGS Igmore did a video talking about black women expect black men to play this game and the game is rigged. You know, it is totally rigged. And one of the things I want to do is share with you that if you become a confident, masculine, dominant, financially secure black man, your dating options are massive. You, you can date black women, you can date Asian women, you can date Latino women, you can date Hispanic women. Your options are endless. They are endless. But you know, we got people living in these racial silos that only black folks should be dating black folks and black folks should only be living in black neighborhoods. It's just crazy to me. And this, this whole coon stuff, because when you do not agree with the black body politic, you are a coon. And I'm one of the most successful coons you will ever come across because a lot of you don't have two nickels to run together with your whole tepness. You don't have no money. You have no power, you have no agency, you have no agenda, but you come to YouTube to criticize someone who has all of that and a lot more. I've got power, I've got agency, I've got an agenda, I've got a plan. And this whole thing where, you know, there's this expectation, because once I never ever got mad at Michael Jordan for doing what he was doing living his life. I don't expect, because someone is famous, has done well, for them to, quote, give back. It's not my expectation of mine. My expectation and this whole notion of do it for your people. See, here's what I've learned, and I'm gonna talk about this briefly. At one point, I was giving 19 courses away, quote, to my people, and to my people, 95% of them didn't crack them open. So this whole notion of giving back and helping people see, uh, Dan Locke, he was at a conference and he said something and I re it really resonated with me. I'm not in the business of helping losers win. I'm in the business of helping winners win more. And that was a, that was a game changing comment and I actually talked to Dan about it because it resonated so well with me because essentially if you're not trying to win, if you're not trying to build anything, I really can't help you. But if you're a person that's on your path, that's working, because I, I've, I see there in this section, because I got a lot of people who are working on something, they're building something, they're building businesses, and then they we meet and we intersect and I can help them. But if you're just sitting down chilling, I can't help you, because you're not even trying to help yourself. And this is a big issue that no one wants to talk about, because every time I bring it up, it's like, well, Glenn is being mean to black folks. I can never be mean to black folks as life will be to you. Can't even get close. But, you know, the, the, the whole tips are, are coming for me and this is the, because I ain't having it on this channel. Because see, 
You can leave those little jacked up comments and I can delete them and no one will ever see them. Cause I'm probably just gonna go ahead and delete that conversation and cuss this dude out because he's an idiot. He accused me of doing some stuff without looking at my body of work. And this is another thing that Hoteps are really good at. They come to the channel and because I say some trigger words, they go off on a whole tangent and they don't even know who I am. They've not done a Google search. They've done nothing. They're just like, oh, he disagrees with the way that I think. Therefore, he's a coon. Crazy, crazy talk, crazy talk. So that's all I got for you guys. Go below, get 30 days, 2,500. Go below, get the Hustlers Mindset, Pimp Your Mind for Success. And also, use, don't get the courses just because they're free. Get them, use them, and go through them so you can start building some income, so you can start creating some power, so you can start creating some economic agency for yourself. So that's all I got for you. Be sure to watch this next video.